planning out various projects. Stapatya is an annual technical fest hosted by the Department of Civil Engineering, VJTI, held under the aegis of Civil Engineering Society. We organize various events related to the field of civil engineering to gauge students' ability to apply foundations of civil engineering into practice. Stapatya has achieved huge success in the field of engineering and corporate sector. Behold, because today we are here to add a truly inspirational name to our glorious list of dignitaries. Our guest for today is the man who is known for the conservation of heritage structures and has successfully restored and renovated over 25 old prestigious heritage and archaeological buildings in India, including the Taj post the terror attacks. I would like to welcome the Restoration Man of India, Mr. Chetan Riker. Sir has completed Bachelor's in Civil Engineering from Sardar Patel University, Gujarat. Beginning his civil engineering career in the late 1980s, Sir joined his father's company, Structwell, a 50-year-old family business. Always keen on taking structural engineering projects, Sir got his first conservation project in 1990. It is really proud to know that there are close to three and a half generations of civil engineers and architects in Sir's family. Sir has got a project of restoring Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus in 2007. Work on this structure got recognition as this was a World Heritage Site. And soon, Sir got the mandate for Mayor's Bungalow and Gateway of India. Sir has also redeveloped various important heritage sites, such as the iconic Rajwada in Indore and Cabo de Rama Fort in Kanakan in South Goa. Sir, this small introduction wouldn't do justice to you. You have blended the eloquent qualities of hard work and persistence with absolute sublimity that can never be unseen. So passing it to you now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samarit. Are you all able to hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, see, I always, I always feel an introduction should be shorter than the lecture itself. So since my introduction was very long, I'll have to have the lecture longer than my introduction. Huh? Chiyari, what's it? So I know you're on mute. So, yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, such a long introduction is not required, actually. So, uh, but, but uh, I enjoyed listening to it. Uh, conservation. Why am I talking conservation in, in a forum of uh, civil engineers? Of course, there is an architect also from the organization, Rinmay Paranjpe, who has uh, joined uh, this group. And uh, she's from my organization, helping me out in uh, uh, the conservation projects that we are doing. Uh, why am I talking uh, conservation in the group of civil engineers? What role uh, civil engineers got to do in conservation? So this is what, uh, these are my views, uh, which are purely personal views. And I'll be sharing a few case studies. Uh, maybe four or five of them, depending on uh, time. Thing. Another uh, point is, uh, I am probably the only structural engineer in the country who has a post graduation in conservation. You can imagine that uh, this field has uh, uh, only architects who are post graduates in conservation. Uh, you are all undergraduates, in, in my opinion. You are studying in uh, the graduation, isn't it? So you can genuinely think of getting into uh, conservation. It is a field which is very, very interesting, uh, very, very challenging. And only if you are passionate about uh, uh, the heritage structures, you know, if you, if you like the heritage structures, if you like to uh, move in heritage structures, if you get goosebumps looking at heritage structures and you keep thinking how they must have been created then you should take up post graduation in conservation and uh, uh, take it up as a career also. Because uh, like repairs is a field of uh, civil engineers, even conservation is a field of civil engineers and uh, with some provisors. We will also see what are the provisors. So I will, I will try and uh, uh, start my presentation by 
sharing the screen but i think i will need some help i'll call uh, uh, ranmay to be here and help me in sharing my screen just a second na huh? Are you able to see my screen now? Yes, and sir. Someone... Yeah. So now yes. is it full screen? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, hi again. It took me a little, uh, a little struggle to uh, get to the first clip: conservation and restoration, and engineer's role. As as the uh, name suggests, today we are on tenth of February, twenty two. How much uh, time do I have, uh, Shreya? Shreya, it's six twenty-two now. So, but one hour or little more? Yes, so so one, one hour. hour. One yeah. hour, right? So I will I will uh, try and finish uh, the lecture in exactly one hour. Let's go quickly to the next uh, thing. What does heritage mean? Heritage means birthright, culture, history, inheritance, legacy. past and tradition these are the dictionary meanings of uh, heritage so if we try and see the structures which we have inherited from uh, uh, the brits and the mughals uh, is it our birthright no is it our culture no is it our history yes is it our inheritance yes we have inherited it from them is it the legacy maybe may not be is it a past yes is it a tradition no so predominantly we have inherited it is inheritance that is what is uh, 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 you know so why do we conserve the structures which are made by the british and the mughals uh, while they rule the country why i personally believe because the structures are extremely beautiful and they are not going to be reconstructed uh, any more in the same fashion uh, that they have been constructed do you think british station will be reconstructed not any more we can not that we don't have the competence or we don't have the kind of money but that's not the choice that's not the, the requirement anymore 
we have built so many railway stations after the british people left but we have not built even a single railway station of that uh, grandeur or that aesthetics so simply just because it's a beautiful creation of someone we should conserve it we should restore it not a not a big reason or anything i'll give you another reason see there are three styles of islamic uh, three styles of architecture you know islamic architecture or gothic style of architecture and indian with, with what uh, world calls vernacular uh, architecture so indian architecture again has several styles if you go and see the structures in south they are different depending on the climate if you go to the coastal structures they are different the temples are different from south to north from east to west so uh, there are several several in gothic there are several styles islamic style also there are several styles of uh, i would say sub styles of uh, architecture but we see predominantly these three styles of we have of course portuguese uh, also and other uh, this is but predominantly these three styles of uh, structures that we see in india what else for why conserve you know we saw one reason why we should conserve wadas forts temples dargahs palaces churches etc etc see forts that was typically a war mechanism why we should conserve it we don't need forts at all because today the king is not safe if he is in a fort somebody can drop a bomb on the king from uh, a helicopter so a king is not safe in a fort but those were uh the forts is a creation of 300 350 400 500 700 years back so why do we conserve forts because uh they will not be recreated anymore and like we just show photographs of dinosaurs to ourselves we will have to show photographs of forts to the next generation and show them that this is how the forts uh, looked so this is a single reason in my opinion why we should conserve who are the team members in the technical team of conservation and putting the first and the topmost structural engineer why not because i am a structural engineer i am a conservationist also but i'll put first a structural engineer because conservation is is an engineering job conservation is a, a restoration job a repair job then next is material scientist we must know about the materials there are several materials used in old construction which are not taught in detail in any of the uh, engineering colleges today in detail i am saying and not taught in architectural colleges at all like architects do not have a subject of geology so they don't know about stones at all and they still are talking uh, about stone uh, conservation is that not a mockery but yes that's the way uh, the system is that's the way the things go and don't don't think that i am talking all this because i am talking in the forum of civil engineers i talk uh, in the same language in the forum of architects also so we must have a material scientist who can know about cast iron who can know about iron who can know about wood or timber who can know about stone who can know about lime who can know about so many other building materials which we have stopped using nowadays we do not use structural timber anymore we use only wood as a part of furniture or for doors and windows at best or flooring we don't use uh, uh, wood in in structural construction i am adding architect also i am not saying that they are not uh, required at all but architect is needed where there is a Uh, adaptive reuse of the structure that we want to convert a palace into a museum or a commercial building into a uh, museum or any other adaptive reuse we do need architects for wherever whenever we want to change the use of a structure otherwise i i reiterate that this is a field of structural engineers we require historians because we can't Uh, we have no authority to change history so if if a structure has history like suppose in a structure lokmanya tilak has stayed you know sardar uh, uh, bhavan opposite profit market or mani bhavan where uh, gandhi ji stayed so we can't change the history so we can't be changing any any part of the structure at our whims and fancies so we must have a historian in projects where we are conserving 
historic structures and even architects are not competent to understand history so they also need to have a historian uh, in the team we need archaeologist if we, if it is an archaeological structure and so many other professionals you know you need people who will be able to restore wall stuccos who will be able to restore uh, paintings who will be able to restore uh, uh, so many other uh, types of building construction you know stained glass and others so we need other professionals also so uh, we need structural engineer material scientist architect historian archaeologist and other professionals as a team member when you have to conserve a structure not necessarily that every person is required in every uh, this thing like a historian and archaeologist may not be required if if the structure does not have a history of its own or it's not an archaeological structure conservation means how how is conservation different than repairs or restoration conservation means to maintain the structure at its present level of damage you can hold the structure to its present level of damage and stop the damage further to repair the structure for the existing damage to retrofit the structure from earthquake cyclone point of view to partially reconstruct the structure where already collapsed this is where this is where particularly a historian is very much required to be part of the team and even an architect but for the first three you don't need an architect actually you don't need a historian you don't need an archaeologist unless it's a archaeological or a structure which has history history mean i i mean political history or any other art history or any other history because every structure has a history but not the personal history of the structure uh, history which which uh, uh, is of any people around or the people of the country to clear and highlight all the important features of the structure and as i said i reiterate where does the role of an architect come when there is an adaptive reuse but all the other five we don't need an architect in the this thing distress in heritage structures distress in heritage structure can be due to neglect can be due to lack of awareness of preventive maintenance improper or inadequate maintenance rent control act i will not elaborate on each aspect because you know i need to finish uh, what 200 slides in uh, 60 minutes so three slides a minute corrosion around the coastal area we have corrosion there can be a fire there are several fires in heritage structure fire can be man made because the all the five case studies that we are going to see each case study is of a different uh, this thing one is a fire damage structure one is a corrosion damage structure one is a blast damage structure one third is age related and all five case studies are of five different types of distress or damage salt attack or marine attack and it can be an earthquake yes one of the case studies is is talking of an earthquake environmental attack carbon dioxide has pollution humidity the process uh, leakage salts which are pollutants and which are there in the uh, pollution you know mumbai pollution has a lot of uh, salinity it has carbon dioxide it has carbon monoxide which which it has a lot of unburnt uh, fuel so that also adds to the uh, health of a structure like it adds it it uh, not adds actually health adds to the distress so it deteriorates the health of a human being also and that of a structure also any conservation project you need to have basic information that is drawings of the structure construction details record of past maintenance data of materials and unfortunately all this is invariably not available on most of the structures that you go but this is a basic information which is needed for repairs projects also not necessarily that this information is needed only for conservation project this is the information needed for uh, restoration projects also when as as a first round of inspection that you take up you need to do dimensional verification whether the drawings that uh, your team has prepared or the drawings that have been given to you by the client whatever drawings little they have whether they are the correct as built drawings so you you measure the structure dimensionally there are several 
uh, uh, new techniques of uh, measurements that are available but uh, they are as of now a bit expensive so uh, people still believe in physical verification of dimensions then sample collection we need to collect various samples from the site you know the samples of the stone the sample of uh, steel that was used the sample of floor tiles either photographic evidence or physical collection of samples you know if you want to go for structural designing if you want to go for petrography then a physical collection of samples is needed but if you just got to copy the uh, existing specifications then even photographic uh, uh, this thing is good so uh, third is non destructive testing uh, if you are a third year or fourth year students then you probably would know not non destructive testing and you must ask me a question ki most of the non destructive tests that have been taught to us are related to concrete the same tests can be done to any other building materials also you can carry out ultrasonic on wood also you can carry out ultrasonic on stone also you can do infrared thermography you can do radar you can do so many other techniques of uh, you can use so many other techniques of non destructive testing in uh, 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 on on heritage structures also you can do endoscopy the same endoscopes which doctor used to see into our stomach we use the same endoscopy to see into a structure endoscope can be used for uh, detection of deterioration inside pipes inside uh, cavity walls uh, deterioration of wood deterioration of walls inside and so many other usages endoscopy has then we do distress mapping on the drawings we identify each distress uh, write down the quantity and the level of distress on the drawings that is called distress mapping so you prepare distress mapping drawings ascertaining load transfer paths see load transfer path is is very easy in case of uh, rcc that is concrete structures you know the load from slabs go to, go to the loads from slabs go to beams then from there uh, it goes to the columns from columns it goes to footings footings to the mother earth but whereas in case of the uh, load bearing structure uh, the load goes from slabs directly on to load bearing walls on to foundation is that all then why am i writing uh, this as a separate point and is it why is it so people do not actually understand how the loads transfer in in uh, load bearing structures say if if there are heritage structures we have uh, one way and two way slabs in uh, rcc frame structures but whereas in heritage uh, structures we have only one way slabs we do not have Excuse me, sir. You're not audible. हेलो सर ओके ओके चल मैं कुछ ना फ्रॉम व्हाट पॉइंट आई मिस हाय आर यू एबल टू हियर मी एंड फ्रॉम व्हाट पॉइंट डिड यू मिस यस ओके सर मैं लास्ट लास्ट पॉइंट हेलो हेलो सर यू एक्सप्लेनिंग एंडोस्कोप मेथड अच्छा सो फ्रॉम एंडोस्कोपी यू आर नॉट एबल टू हियर मी ओके यस सर 
see endoscopy is is a has anyone seen an endoscope because endoscope is a is a is an eye e y e i dora where human eye cannot reach so doctors medical doctors use endoscopy and they put the endoscope through your mouth to inspect the whole respiratory tract or the food tract and things like that you know so they just find out the same endoscope we can use in case of uh, heritage structures also and know the kind of distress that is there inside you know the buried ends of uh, uh, wooden members or uh, uh, whether the pipes are corroded from inside whether the cavity walls the cavity is is functional and what about the leakages in uh, corners and so many usages endoscopy has so excuse me sir yeah i'm so sorry to interrupt you but you're not sharing your screen so oh, the screen sharing also is gone is it yes okay let me one second one second i'll do that Can you see it now? Yes, sir. So we we were on distress mapping, right? Yes, sir. So distress mapping is is a is a technique of mapping the distresses that you see. What are the different kind of distresses uh, uh, that you would uh, expect in a structure? You know, leakage. uh we we may be able to see cracks in a structure we may be able to see uh, bending uh, shear cracks flexure flexure and bending then torsional cracks cracks in uh, load mass load bearing masonry walls because of settlement because of overstressing uh, then external if it is a structure which has plaster you know brick brick structures do have uh, lime plasters you know which is called rendering so the lime plaster could be leaking and uh, it could have uh, outlived its serviceable life and so many so there can be 25 uh, 50 types of distresses it's extremely important to uh, put this distress on the drawings you know you mark the quantity and the the level of distress so that you can know whether the structure is what is the stage of Uh, uh, the health of a structure, whether it is good or whether it is bad, or whether it is uh, extremely bad, whether it is about to collapse, some portion is about to collapse, and things like that. And it is extremely important to do distress mapping and uh, to uh, what I mean to say is uh, see the health of the structure. because because i will share when in one of the case studies i will when i come there i will i will tell you what happens when someone is not unable to do the distress mapping then ascertaining load transfer paths this i did not explain right earlier i think i got disconnected before this can somebody yes sir yeah so so what is a load transfer path in case of a rcc uh, structure it is the load is on the slabs from slabs it goes to beams from beams it goes to columns from columns to footings to mother earth whereas in case of a uh, load bearing structure it goes from slabs directly to walls and to mother earth the main prop no the main challenge main difference between rcc structures rcc slabs and load bearing structure slabs is load bearing structure slabs are invariably one way types there are no two way type slabs in uh, like in rcc in rcc we have one way or two way slabs whereas in load bearing we have uh, only one way slabs so two walls of opposite side are loaded and two walls the other two walls in a room are not loaded at all so we have to be very careful in understanding which walls are loaded and how is the load transfer of the entire structure going to mother earth 
because this is very useful in in doing the retrofitting when you are uh, doing a uh, structure which is earthquake affected or you want to improve the earthquake resistance of a structure analysis of historic value you know the age of which the structure belongs to the material used in their construction sound or unsound condition of the structure social significance of the structure means how how important it is whether it is locally important whether it is important to the state important to the country whether it has a uh, historic in the sense uh, uh, not personal history i, I repeat Uh, so social significance of the structure is very very uh, important also non destructive tests you have all probably seen these tests but i will not elaborate because explaining non destructive tests is again a, a complete one day exercise ultrasonic pulse velocity core extraction core is not a, a non destructive test it's a, a sampling process so you extract cylindrical cores from uh, any building material you know you can extract cores from uh, wood you can extract cores from stone you can extract cores from uh, concrete so many other uh, building material and subject them to various tests right from chemical analysis to compression test to tensile or any other test that you want to want a subject you want the subject uh, want the material to be subjected to then petrography petrography is a science of uh, uh, stones uh you doing microscopic inspection of stones or concrete uh, elements of lime concrete also you can do petrography and uh, unfortunately petrography is not taught in architectural colleges at all rather they don't they are not taught geology at all so it, i'm sure it should be included in the architectural course urgently if they have to do uh, conservation inspection using endoscopy and drones we'll show you some photographs of uh, drone inspection also in the presentation today chemical analysis and carbonation this is extremely useful uh, test because you do chemical analysis of uh, concrete or lime or any other building material you know steel and know what are the ingredients of the material so that you can replicate the material and replace uh, wherever needed needed with the same uh, type of geological classification of the stone thermogravimetric analysis or xrd it is required in fire damage structures i will not explain i'm sorry i'll move ahead thermography by infrared camera thermography also is a very interesting uh, uh, tool or interesting non destructive inspection uh, technique because thermography is uh, where you take uh, photographs of the external surface and measure the temperature di temperature difference you know 1 upon 100 of a degree centigrade thermography can uh, measure and from that you can make out the interiors near surface interiors of the sub, of the object that you are taking photographs of you know whether there are cracks whether the uh, wood is eroded from inside there is uh, plaster is leaking uh, whether the pipeline is leaking the pipeline has bursted and so many applications infrared camera has now one more question one more reason why i feel we must conserve is can you see this structure this is vagh mandir of morvi a palace constructed just 100 years back isn't it beautiful we have a case study of this and if somebody has visited my youtube channel i have explained this this in detail in form of six videos uh, just recently in last 3 uh, months uh, this thing so it's very beautiful so that is traditional architecture or indian uh, uh, vernacular architecture this is in uh, gujarat 65 kilometers from morbi so this is a combination of uh, palatial construction you can see a temple inside so but it's it's so beautiful and i would show you a palace which was recently constructed in mumbai by uh, a present day king so you can see a difference between this palace uh, constructed by a king just about 100 years back and this is a palace of today can you see the difference in architecture and if you like this palace i am happy about it uh, i hope that you also build a palace like this uh, in your life but if i have enough money i would like to build a palace like this so do you see the change in architecture and this is the reason the sole reason i believe that we must conserve this otherwise 100 years down the line when this kind of a structure the morvi palace 
is 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 gone to the dust we would be showing this as the palace because this is a modern construction and i am sure the next generations need to know a lot better about india and not only this as a palace let's see case study taj taj after 2611 attack i was fortunate uh, to be chosen to do uh, complete conservation architectural as well as uh, structural we were the only indian company uh, who were chosen why i don't know because i always believe that every structure has a soul in it pratyek vastu mane ek atma asto ani that atma decides who would uh, uh, work like we decide which doctor should operate you know if if i have to undergo some uh, surgery i decide which doctor would do the surgery so similarly there is a soul in every uh, structure and that soul decides who should be the maybe the soul decided that chetan raikar uh, should be doing the operations on me so let's let's see a quick case study of uh, conservation and structural conservation of taj palace mumbai this is a very famous photograph which was seen in every every uh, uh, newspaper entire fifth and sixth floor was very badly damaged by uh, the terrorists uh, because what happened is uh, i think they entered the structure somewhere around 8:30 or 9 o'clock in the night and then in initial couple of hours 3 4 hours they were able to kill a few human beings total 22 or 23 uh, my number could be little wrong uh, humans were killed but the taj people were so so smart and with with uh, absolute integrity they helped almost 2000 2500 of their guests who were either staying there or had come to enjoy the uh, structure as guests for dining or whatever or whatever shopping they were able to make them allow them to escape from various routes fortunately for us the terrorists didn't have the plans of the structure the nsg the national security guard could come only after 12 hours why we should ask the government at that time why did it take 12 hours but in the meantime our police maharashtra police who we who we have started respecting uh, more recently and in my earlier days we used to call them pandu havalda for some stupid reasons they fought with these terrorists having ak47s and other uh, uh, automatic uh, weapons with their service revolvers and lathis they they drove them to the fifth and sixth floor and confined them there till nsg came so for almost uh, 11 or 12 hours our maharashtra police fought with them salute to them and that's the reason the damage was very very limited and once nsg took over nsg was equally very armed so nsg came from the top they came from helicopters they came went into all the uh, structures through all the uh, openings of the structures but in the meantime the terrorists got a lot of time with no one to kill they started burning the structure so the fifth and sixth floor was entirely burnt burnt uh, when we went into the structure the typical challenges that we have in any of these things non availability of accurate as built drawings non availability of any structural drawings non availability of data on material of construction combined attack due to grenades and fire as i said they started burning the structure there were uh, bullet marks on the structure and they had burnt the structure so it was a combined effect of death of course uh, dropped a few hand grenades also so the structure was i will show you a few quick photographs there is a non disclosure agreement so not that i can show many photographs but what i show are good for the, our engineering discussions again the load transfer path because once you see the photographs i show you will know how how difficult the load transfer path in this particular structure was because uh, i mentioned that fifth and sixth floor but i didn't mention that uh, the entire structure was constructed in 1903 that is close to 120 years uh, back and somewhere in early 60s the floor between fifth floor and the sixth floor currently was added so we they added the sixth floor somewhere around 60 years back and uh, that was constructed that was added in concrete and steel whereas the rest of the structure is in wood and stone we'll see some photographs material strengths original residual non destructive tests were carried out 
to know the original and residual strength of uh, various building materials. Verification of physical dimensions of various architectural and structural members was carried out. So just read the title, and so that you can read this one. Investigation included all these aspects. Then non-destructive testing that we constructed was ultrasonic pulse velocity to know the extent of fire damage, core extractions of stone and concrete to know the residual strength. Petrographic analysis of concrete and stone, endoscopy, X, TGA and XRD and chemical analysis. We saw all this, but if you want to know the details of it, go to the net, you will get it. If you don't, uh, mail me, I will send you the details. Entity finds, you may say that, oh, from where did the concrete come? I'll show you a few photographs. Then we took samples of the uh, brick cores also and subjected them to uh, testing. This is uh, micro photographs of concrete thin sections, that is petrography of uh, uh, concrete, which shows micro cracking. So you can see that concrete has, has underlying micro cracking. This cracking is not seen. If you see the uh, core again, concrete core, you do not see. But if you, same core, if you subject to, if it is a fire damaged uh, concrete structure and if you subject it to Petrography. Petrography is where you see a hundred times magnified view of a, of, of a Excuse me, sir, you are not audible. I would like to apologize to all our live viewers. We have some technical glitch. We will get back to you in a couple of minutes. Till then, be patient. Thank you. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, sir. I think there is some challenges for us. It's very funny because I'm in my office and uh, uh, the connection is very, very strong. The Wi-Fi connection doesn't matter. Huh. So endoscopy, these are the photographs. Let me go a bit faster. See, this is how was the construction of sixth floor, which was added somewhere in early 60s, as I said. You can see concrete. You can see steel, you can see load-bearing bricks, 9 bit thick. Concrete also had corrosion damage. This corrosion damage had nothing to do with the terrorist attack, but this also had corrosion damage. So this is how the fifth floor looked. What you see at, at the bottom, this portion is a uh, uh, wooden uh, member. This is concrete. This is load-bearing uh, wall again. I will go a bit fast because I have taken half an hour, 35 minutes, and only first case to be around. So can you see the twisting of steel members? Because of this is because of heat. Because these are fixed at two ends, and when you keep uh, heating it because of fire, the whole thing starts lengthening. And once once it's it's restrained from both ends, it starts uh, twisting. It undergoes a torsional effect. Here, if you see a, a dome here, that is a presidential suite and a similar dome existed here, bell tower suite. So we will see restoration of bell tower suite because that was entirely burnt, a wooden dome. Luckily for us, we had a, a similar dome on the north side of the structure from where we could take the dimensions and recreate a dome along the south side. 
This is how the uh, Beltar suite looked before the terrorist attack. What you see on the top, there was a, there is a mezzanine, and what you see on the top. In fact, uh, recently, last about six months, Taj has sent a video showing uh, uh, an English lady staying in this and this and that. So that's exactly a Beltar suite. And this is how uh, when we got it. This is how it looked earlier. If you see this corner above the chandelier, it is something similar to this. You know, this is the corner. This is the mezzanine, and from mezzanine, if you look down, this is the ground floor. Now, two three aspects which I want to share about Beltar Suite. The entirely it was built in Burma teak. But if you see this photo. 60% of the wood is above the false ceiling. This is false ceiling. So I went and asked uh, one of the one of the, I went and asked the director of projects. I said, uh, sir, 60% of the wood is above the false ceiling. So can I use Ghana teak, not Burma teak? I said teak, but can I use Ghana teak, which is half the price of uh, Burma teak? So he said, no. What's the original material of construction? I said, uh, sir, it's Burma teak. So he said, no. Then if we have to announce in the public that we have restored it to its lost lost glory then we must use barmatic only see that's the integrity of uh, tata uh, group i'm sure if it was some other commercial group they would have said oh is it about the false ceiling then why not we use concrete it will still be cheaper you know instead of teak wood so i really salute tata group for uh, uh, their integrity and i had very good experiences working with uh, uh, barmatic those i'm sure you have not used barmatic but these sections can you see a dovetail here these sections are 1 foot by 2 feet in size to get a barmatic of this size is is very 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 difficult but we could procure it because we had a strong uh, uh, contractor uh, in in uh, shapurji palanji With again a lot of integrity and dedication, it's part of Tata Group uh, companies only. So uh, that's how we could uh, complete the project absolutely properly. There are several other areas which were burnt and damaged. They looked like this. We recreated certain portion. Let me go a little fast. See, this is a complete MEP. The uh, mechanical ventilation systems heat and ventilation systems have been uh, burnt down this is how the whole thing looked before the damage this is how it looked can you see before the attack and after the attack the glass roof that you see which is which is damaged by heat also and damaged by our uh, nsg also because they climbed the roof or rather they got down onto the roof from helicopters they they destroyed the glass and from there they were shooting the terrorists this is how when we got the structure several glasses were broken and this is how completed taj looks like let's go to the earthquake affected this is the same photo which we saw towards the beginning This structure was built by Vagji Bapu, so it's called uh, uh, Vag Mandir. Locally, people like to call it Mani Mandir because uh, Mani was the lady in whose memory uh, this structure was uh, constructed by uh, Sir Vagji Bapu, and it was a government office since 1947. In the earthquake of 2001, it was devastated. It was very heavily uh, uh, destroyed. You can see the structure. Can you see this? this defies structural engineering because we have all learned that in an arch crown stone is very important if the crown stone gets displaced the arch must collapse but you can see even a displaced the crown stone has displaced by almost 8 inches 200 mm and the structure is still standing so structure defines our structural engineering in so many cases and right? it's very interesting to speak to the structure you know how you are still standing and structure tells you so many stories which go beyond the structural engineering you know uh, sigma v is equal to 0 sigma h is equal to 0 and sigma m is equal to 0 asa kaytri asta na mala ata i don't remember all that do i am a structural engineer myself but uh, it defines uh, all this by why? why because like human beings even structures have a will to survive 
they don't want to collapse they don't want to die and they certainly don't want to die a premature death earthquakes fire terrorist attacks corrosion these are not premature deaths we have to be very very careful in maintaining the structures let's see how we restored this you know so you can see the kind of distress you can see this photo also photograph on your right it again defines how the whole thing is standing but it's a very precarious condition in 2010 we started the restoration first thing we did was prop the entire structure because even while we were preparing the drawings of the structure the structure was crumbling and collapsing so we had to prepare more than 2 3000 props were uh, quickly installed and the entire structure was made safe safe in the sense collapse collapse proof further and then we started uh, moving around in the structure this is how we had to prop the dilapidated structure now what you see here is a is a numbering that we did to the whole structure because we had to deconstruct the structure deconstruct is removing stone by stone piece by piece and conservation is the same piece the same stone has to go back to its original location so we had to do three dimensional numbering and remove some portion of the structure only some portion on the second floor piece by piece and re-erect you can see the numbers on this also then reuse of maximum number of original stones more than 90% of the stones we segregated and reused only 10% of the stone was probably wasted or brought new because it it had already uh, uh, collapsed and broken into several pieces something which was broken into two pieces we joined we jointed the two uh, with epoxy and used them we had divided the structure into seven wings and this is these are stones of wing 1 you know the segregation of every stone was carried out and the stone probably has gone back to the original locations if if a chacha had collapsed only partially or broken only partially then we extended we kept the original uh, stone in position and extended with a new stone or even the collapsed stone as the case may be so this is where we were able to bring the cost down see i can proudly say that if we had to reconstruct the structure of this size about 2 lakh square feet it could have been anywhere between 450 or 600 crores but we could restore the whole structure with the kind of distress that i just showed you in only about 17 crores so uh, that's the beauty of structural engineering we we deconstructed the structure piece by piece brought it down either manually or using cranes or even the even the our crown stones were pushed back to their original position what you see here this person what he is doing is this is a truck jack using a truck jack we were able to push back the crown stones so we were able to save almost about 500 uh, uh, arches crown stones were placed in the same position using truck jacks this is this appear simple uh, technique but do it structurally there Uh, you require a lot of uh, conviction that you are able to do it this is what he is doing pushing the structure the person at the bottom is just jacking the uh, crown stone up and the person at the top is hand guiding the crown stone into its final position and once you have done it you put uh, helix pins or you know stainless steel pins across two or three stones so that you are stitching the stones together so this is how we have done the helix stones uh, fixing you know so where you fix two or three stones together so that in the next earthquake the structure behaves a lot more uh, uh, effectively this is another case where uh, you can see you can see sky through this is a 450 mm thick uh, wall or maybe even sometimes 6k 600 yeah here it is shown 450 but sometimes a 600 mm thick wall also and there were two cracks so now how do i so one option was remove the entire wall stone by stone or recreate but it would have been prohibitively expensive so what we did was we uh, made 50 mm diameter 2 inch diameter uh, holes from the second floor from the terrace right down to the plinth so that was about 12 meters uh, high in total 12 or maybe 11 meters high in total then inserted a steel rod 
throughout from top to bottom a single rod and grouted the whole area. So this is how the first photograph on the left shows the quarry. Second photograph shows how the core is removed piece by piece, sample by sample. Then you insert the reinforcement in the hole, and this hole is that is that you have created is grouted with cement, sand, mortar, or even uh, 100 mm, uh, 10 mm down uh, size aggregate is used to uh, grout. So you are creating reinforced concrete uh, uh, columns of single reinforcement. In the middle of the uh, masonry, so you are creating a masonry from normal load bearing to reinforced concrete load bearing masonry without the reinforcement being seen anywhere. This again is a is a, a simple yet innovative concept, and it brings in a lot of retrofitting value to the structure. You can see that this uh, drill is about five feet or one point five meter long. So the person who is using it, he is drilling horizontally five feet. So we also inserted horizontal reinforcement up to five feet. So which was able to stitch three stones together. So we reinforce the masonry horizontally as well as vertically throughout the structure. Next was carving. Now this is typically uh, what people say architectural. So where is architecture got to do? Why structural engineering cannot do carving? Anything that is aesthetics, the engineer raise our hand says, "No, no, no, they architect bagun gail." Why? Don't you do painting? Do you not know music? These are all forms of art. So you have to be very sensitive towards the need of the structure, and uh, that's it. So we did a lot of carved out uh, this thing. If you want to know more about this, uh, go to the YouTube channel uh, of Chetan Raika. That's me, and uh, have a detailed look at these videos. You know, they are very. Original carvings, the slabs which had fully collapsed and corroded, we re recreated the whole area. Some of the before and after photographs you can see. This, see this. This is the exact location without uh, removing the structure. We have recreated this portion like this. See the crack. This is almost six inch wide crack at the second floor level, and the third floor, which had collapsed fully, the chhatri has been recreated. I'll go a little faster. Using vegetable paints, painting of uh, original. This is top of the uh, temple dome. This is how the temple looks. Magnificent structure. If someone is going uh, in that area near Rajkot, you must visit uh, this structure. Beautiful. This is how it looks in the night. This is how it looks uh, during the daytime. Let's go to the conservation of fire damage, Rajwada. Rajwada was created by Devi Ahilya Bai. Uh, 250 years back, or now about 270 years back, and it was destroyed in the uh, riots of 1984. After the assassination of uh, our honourable Prime Minister, then Madam Indira Gandhi ji, and uh, there was a shop of a Sikh uh, person which was burnt by the rioters, and uh, uh, no one wanted to hurt Rajwada because Rajwada uh, Indore ki naak kehlata hai. You know, it's a pride of Indore. So no Indorean would have uh, liked to damage. But this wooden structure was. Uh, this is actually a seven-story structure. The front facade structure in the inner portion is uh, ground plus one. Ground floor has Ganesh hall and the first floor has uh, the Darbar hall. This is uh, how the Darbar hall uh, looked when I went there on the first day. And uh, the palace had collapsed. So uh, now, how do you restore? You don't have any clue of how it existed except that a couple of columns like this, which are you know in a damaged condition, standing there. But luckily, as I said, you know when the structure from 19, I, I did this structure from 2004 to 2007, three years. That's about 15 years back. But uh, 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 from 84 to 2004, in 20 years, three people tried to restore Rajwada, but they were not fortunate. Why was I fortunate? Maybe uh, the Rajwada structure was waiting for me. And in the first month itself, I received a call from a newspaper called Nahi Duni.
ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಮತ್ತೆ ಏಕನ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಶೇರ್ ಏನ can you hear me yes sir i don't know why my uh, there are so many things that are happening in my career for the first time the first time i was late again in the first time so many times my connection is getting lost and sitting no right problem. in front of the wifi i know you are do you even if you have a problem what can i do about it <laughs> sorry about that extremely sorry see this is these are the photographs of nayi duniya when actually the darbar was Uh, taken place. So these are photographs which are hundred years old. So can you see the can you see the uh, support that the structure gives you when you earnestly want to do it and you are destined to uh, do it? So after this, uh, there are three styles of architecture in the in the palace: Mughal, you know, the semi-circular arch, the French arch, which has uh, low rise, no low central rise and large spans, and then the you know Zaroka style of uh, Hindu palace architecture. this is how the structure looked when i got it what you see here the first floor had totally collapsed and i can show you some photographs where the distress is this is how the uh, structure look uh it had a vaulted brick roof but then we went in for rcc uh, roof because it was about the false ceiling because if we did vaulted roof uh, it would have been extremely expensive one and second thing is it would have been very time consuming and uh, uh, the government did not have that much of time so we had but it is technically correct as as certified by uh, an expert from english heritage uh, who expressed that when i presented this in a in a forum where i was uh, being trolled by some people that is something incorrect that we have done you know change the history but he said no since uh, there was a false ceiling earlier also and now also you can see the false ceiling in these photographs can you see this is the false ceiling above this was the vaulted uh, roof vaulted brick roof so it didn't matter whether the vaulted brick roof existed or it didn't exist this is how uh, i got the structure some of the arches in place but the stone is fully damaged from within the slab has entirely collapsed i will go a lot fast on this we did preparation of drawings then procurement of stone from rajasthan while the stone was being procured we created concrete pillars why we did concrete pillars we should have done them in stone the earlier were in stone but they also had uh, if you see this photograph again they also had lime rendering all these stones had lime lime rendering so when you have a lime rendering it doesn't matter whether uh, you have concrete inside or uh, otherwise so we decided to uh, prepare the columns in concrete then on the top of these concrete columns we had a single piece stone uh, single piece stone so how did we connect this stone to the uh, concrete pillar we had a structural section in between and this was woven from top in fact we got uh, an award for this project from institution of structural engineers uk for innovative uh, structural connections which were earthquake resistant then we had structural steel column uh, structural steel beams and on both sides we had 6 inches of uh, stone masonry cladding which was filled up with uh, stone masonry grout a uh, stone uh, uh, concrete uh, grout you know lime stone and uh, sand so that was grouted and the whole thing was concrete so this is how you can see concrete columns a steel pipe and in which uh, this uh, uh, stone cap was woven from top this is how the whole thing was completed the carvers doing the carving the stone being uh left some portion which was partially broken was recreated using stone this is where the uh, the stone capital was developed on site 
these are various techniques this is plastic mortar where you use the stone powder and uh, same color sand they use stone powder as uh, sand and then white cement and matching additives and develop partially broken uh, stone portions you know you can develop them using this and then grind them uh, smooth to the shape and uh, size that you want it does not look exactly the same but it's quite close to uh, you know in which we which we call 90% accuracy or akrabis or 19 pieces 95% accuracy this is how the whole this column had cracked in three locations and that's how so that we they didn't want the chatri to collapse and they had kept the whole thing tight we we replaced this column from this end to this end keeping the entire chatri intact and then remove this uh, bracings which were uh, and we clean the whole marble chatri you can see this portion of the chajja has broken this has been recreated here and here so this is this is what is uh, engineering kariguri this is restoration of wood lime mortar see this is what i said we recreated it in concrete because this was above the false ceiling this is how the the rajwada was when it was under actual use this is how we got it and this is how we left it so it is more or less accurate i just make one one uh, uh, compliment that i received while i was standing here at this place where the photographer of this photographer photograph was standing and i was looking at my uh, creation and i said yaar ithe thoda sa barobar nahi zalo and this is what it is and so i just trying to some old guy came and stood next to me because this was a public area so people were just walking in and out of the structure even when we were uh, restoring so from his eyes i could see some twinkle and i said chacha kya dekh rahe ho aap to he said are beta ye lagbhag waisa hi dikhta hai main bachpan mein darbar mein aaya tha mere pita ji ke sath to lagbhag waisa hi dikhta hai i said that's the compliment every professional is uh, uh, looking forward to so i will show you this is how it looked you can see the three doors at the rear you can see the columns you can see the column capitals the size the proportion the size of the entire structure has been recreated based on these photographs we we had we were seeing these photographs 20 times in a magnified lens and then see this is how we got no records and this is how we uh, created i am sure i must have made a lot of mistakes but uh, i will answer to ayla devi when i go up you know so the world appreciated it we got two international awards for this project that's not uh, uh, what we look for you know the more award was when a common man says ye lagbhag waisa hi dikhta hai jaisa maine bachpan mein dekha tha so that is that these are some other photographs of uh, what we did puna engineering so 170 years old structure now totally asymmetrical structure the only asymmetrical structure heritage structure that i have done in my entire history and by the way i have not done 25 i have done more than 100 structures uh heritage conservation this must be uh, one of my old uh, cvs i suppose but then it's okay you know so this is this is how the structure existed this is how it looks i will go a little fast same we we did all the, all the archival search 2d analysis these are interventions which are needed to be removed now this is the one which i wanted to show you before us there was a senior architect from pune a conservation architect who was restoring this and during his one year of association there were three collapses in the structure and he was Uh, removed from the project and we were appointed see it's very unfortunate that he was removed but i suppose he was needed to be removed if he did not understand that this part of the structure is about to collapse and this is where lack of knowledge of load transfer path uh, is seen very clearly you cannot have you cannot permit collapses you remove you deconstruct the structure yourself if it is about to collapse or prop it you can't have Three collapses in one year in a in a small structure. This is only sixty seventy thousand square feet structure. It's not a big structure at all. Now this is also about to uh, collapse. The crown stone has moved. You can see the movement in these joints also. So uh, this this structure had interesting challenges. 
I will go quickly on it. One more, one more success story is is the same architect had said that this is gold leaf. So that's a work aslele kaam hai mano. But when I said I, I thought that this was not true because uh, this was a governor's house during the British time and British were. Uh, they looted us, but they were wise. They would never make golden leaf work uh, on uh, governor's palace. So I took some samples of this and and subjected them to testing. So this is where endoscopy is being done, and we realized that the gold leaf work, which the other architect was saying, was nothing but gold paint. So we could save almost a crore, crore and a half of the public fund. By just one decision, of course, my fees fees got reduced in the process, but that's okay. A professional is supposed to give honest opinion. The entire structure was weak, so we had to strengthen it by doing uh, gunniting on both the sides because we wanted the structure to short creating is is a type of gunniting uh, gunniting. So uh, this is what we did. All the all the external walls we grouted. Because they had hollows, these hollows were uh, we were able to record these hollows using radar and ultrasonic uh, pulse velocity. The wood inlay work was uh, restored. This is how the structure when we got it on the left, and this is how when we uh, left it. A few photographs of before and after. Few photographs. So one more success story I will show you. We saved, as I said, more than a crore of rupees just by uh, painting. Just, just painting it with gold and not with. Uh, I will show you one case study. Now this, this is the original uh, uh, handle which we found, and promptly my office found out somebody who could supply it from Belgium at a cost of thirteen thousand five hundred rupees plus import duty plus everything. So it was coming to some seventeen, eighteen thousand rupees per sample. We had to take not many but about hundred and twenty-five odd samples. I said, "Yeah, my country can send Mongolian. Why can't we develop this?" One decision which we took was to change the crown because we wanted to remove the symbols of uh, uh, our uh, non-independence days. You know, so of course I, I didn't have the authority to change it because this is a Grade One structure. But still, we went ahead and changed this to the university logo. So we found out in UP. There was a person who was able to give us exactly the same dimension handles at uh, some 125 rupees with some taxes and transportation and everything. So the cost came down from 17, 18 thousand rupees to less than 200 rupees. So we saved a few lakhs again on this particular item, and that is what is called uh, engineering with integrity. i could have just sat tight and said no 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 sir we must order from belgium and this and that but that's not what is conservation about you know nana wada pure is is a wada of nana fernandes 250 years old beautifully carved fall ceilings i will go a little fast because the last case study is a lot more interesting i suppose and i think i have already shot 5 minutes theory for someone This is how wood conservation is is being done. Broken wood carving or broken wood. See, there are carvers available today. You know, someone had asked me in one of the distances, "Ki can you reproduce Taj Mahal?" I said, "Sir, बनाने वाले हैं, बनवाने वाले नहीं हैं. अगर आप बनवा सकते हो, तो मैं बना के दिखाता हूँ आपको Taj Mahal भी. Exactly same dimension Taj Mahal across the other shore of." Jamuna River, but do you have the kind of patience and uh, uh, money? We found uh, uh, hidden staircases, you know, inside the wada, and we recreated them. Beautiful. It's very. It's an archaeological structure. We were happy uh, doing all that. So Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus. This is one classic uh, beauty. I call this building Ashwarya Rai. You know, so. Uh, Uh, a very 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 beautiful structure looks good in the day also in the night also of course i don't like that purple and other that multicolored uh, uh, this thing what they have done now 
this is a statue of progress which is uh, about 22 feet and just about 5 tons at a height of about 170 feet i don't know how they would have lifted it uh, during those days but uh, they used indian uh, people only so i don't i don't give credit to brits for making the structure so beautiful because they use our money our carriers and uh, mostly our brain with their system you know so uh, uh, they have created something beautiful but not without the help of our uh, uh, artisans so they had these round rails where they had uh, uh, their uh, important people including colonels what you see here interestingly is GIPR Great Indian Peninsula Railway in, in uh, Gothic architecture you can see the same same carving repeated in several materials you can see the GIPR in uh, stone also you can see GIPR in wood also you can see it in cast iron also and you can see it in stained glass also maybe i'll have those uh, photographs here these are gargoyles and what you see these gargoyles are six feet cantilevers 1.8 meters cantilevers it's as good as uh, a, a normal height human being uh, sleeping horizontally but they have not moved even one mm in uh, 140 to 143 years of service life you can see a peacock this is single stone peacock here what you can see, you can see a cobra, you can see lions, see these, these animals are not available in UK. So that means uh, the F.W. Stevens, whom people call architect, but he was architectural engineer. And uh, he, he permitted the local craftsmen to, to do their own carving because why I am saying so confidently, saying so confidently because the drawings prepared by him and the actual carving. We see a lot of difference because we have those original <coughs> drawings. We have seen those original drawings and we have uh, photocopies of uh, those original drawings. And what is carved and what is what he had uh, perceived, there is a lot of difference. So, see, this is what GIPR. You see it in different uh, materials, you know. This is the staircase, grand staircase. You see the staircase is nine feet of cantilever here and 13 feet of cantilever here. It has not moved even 1 mm, it, despite all the earthquakes and so many movements and uh, probable settlement and changes that have happened in the city. So much of construction that has happened around, this has not moved even 1 mm. That's real structural engineering. We need to learn a lot more on load bearing structures and every new structure has something new to teach us. These are uh, quinches. 7 feet in depth, so these walls are more than 10 feet thick. This is the octagonal dome above the central courtyard. Beautiful, you must go there. I have, I have no words to explain the beauty of this uh, structure. And uh, we as Indians have added these pipes, you know, uh, MS and cast iron pipes and AC pipes and total apathy for the structure. This is what engineers do. And that's how the architects tell you that you people are not worthy of doing conservation. Even a simple sympathy for the structure. See, it is like throwing acid on a face of a lady here, yeah? whether beautiful or otherwise. You can't throw acid on anybody, and this is this is equivalent to that. You know, that is, and this is such a beautiful lady. How can we even do that? Yeah, this Abhinav nail mara, uske haath mein nail marna chahiye. Sachi It's uh, it's such a ridiculous thing. There's another thing. You know, there were 22 uh, pipes or 22 tanks like this, haphazardly kept throughout the structure. We were fortunate that we were given a freedom and from 22 tanks we reduced to 5 tanks. Out of the 5 tanks, the 3 original tanks were recommissioned, including the firefighting tank. Can you beat that 140 to 145 years back, they had a firefighting tank also. They had the concept of firefighting. This is the jaw of the line on the front gate, which was with a damage very reproduced the same with the same kind of uh, uh, material you may say you know in fact somebody some uh, see professionally kisi ke pet mein to dukha hoga when i did the job you know so somebody got it printed that see what he has done you know he has spoiled the structure this is a wrong type of stone but he didn't know that he or she i don't know who did that uh, the architect didn't know that we had done the petrography of this original stone and use the stone of same geological classification. Today, if you go and see, of course, this is a uh, 18, uh, 19 year old story. 
today if you go and see you can't make out which jaw of the lion was broken but even in i had said as a reply to uh, this thing i said see it after 3 or 5 years let this stone also weather because this is new and this is a 130 year old weathered stone so now you can't see it so see people show their ignorance by even when they criticize somebody in public they show their ignorance this is how the structure was till 2001 and after we did the roof conservation and waterproofing for 22 years there has not uh, been a single leakage that's the strength of structural engineering and material scientist and today i can proudly say most architects in the city are uh, they copy these specifications the same specifications are copying uh, being copied around in the whole city today what we did was removed all the battens the eroded wooden boards were removed and replaced you can see this photograph where it is removed and this is where new this is old board and this is new board wooden with tongue and groove we put vertical battens first then we put horizontal battens on the top at the ends where there is a load bearing wall and and the mangalore tile we had a gi uh, plate you know 2 mm thick gi plate no 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 no, no sorry not gi laid laid sheet uh, 2 mm thick which was uh, laid to this slope, this shape and screwed into the load bearing wall by making a, a 50 by 75, I, I roughly remember the dimensions, 50 by 75 mm uh, slot, you know, you can see this slot in this photograph here, you can see the slot and this is where, where the laid sheet is laid, I don't know whether I have a photograph of it, but I wish I could show you. This is how the slot is uh, made and the laid sheet goes inside and that slot is filled up with uh, uh, plastic mortar. Then we put uh, uh, polymerized bitumen sheet and this is how the completed structure looks. This is a cracking in stone column. This is a challenge now which we are taking up now after 18 years. But we have some innovative solutions but since we have not done it, I will not uh, uh, boast about it now. I, I would speak about it after the work is completed. These are the drone looks. Can you see the drone here? And it looks so beautiful. But drone survey is extremely uh, useful. I think that's that's all. I have, I think, shot little about 15 minutes beyond my time schedule, but I can partially blame it to uh, the two or three outages that my Wi-Fi system uh, took. Thank you very much. If, if there are any questions, uh, I would try to take them. Thank you, sir, for such an insightful lecture. I'm sure that I'm speaking on the behalf of entire audience watching us right now. Sir, I would like to quote you. Each structure is living and has a soul. The structure talks to you, provided you know the language. These words are indeed a driving force for all the budding civil engineers. You really inspired us with your groundbreaking thoughts as you are beginning on this journey and presented us with brilliant ideas while instilling a new perspective in our lives. So let's answer just one of our audience's questions. So during the structural restoration work of the Taj, you had quoted rupees one as the cost of consultancy, which is very surprising. So would you like to share that incident? See, what happens is uh, every professional has hunger at three locations in the body. One is dil, one is dimag, and one is pet. See, a professional has to support his team financially. So he has to get his fees. But uh, if you had, if you also had seen the structure in the devastated state and the kind of uh, uh, blood that was flowing around uh, in some of the rooms, uh, it's a very, very frustrating experience. It's a, you get, you feel so annoyed that a, a, a structure, uh, that a, a, a neighbor, a country which is so small can treat us so, so disrespectfully uh, at their whims and fancies. And what can we do about it? You know, I feel that if Modi ji was the prime minister at that time, we would have finished Pakistan at that point in time itself for such a nasty act of this. 
we showed them their place after the pulwama and the uri attack that they did on uh, our soldiers and uh, us so if if there was anything like 2611 maybe if modi ji was there 2611 would not have happened at all but if 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 at all if it had happened we would have shown them their place but i said i am not a soldier i am a civil engineer and my strength is pen i cannot pick up a gun i can fight with a pen so what can i do for my country this is a project for nation taj is not owned by me but yes i am one of the 130 crores owners of taj it's a pride of the whole country today if if you say uh, uh, shivaji maharaj and sir raigad it's a pride for every uh, uh, indian so i believe that if you get such structures what can you contribute beyond your technical knowledge so in that in that process of all these thought processes i said let me quote uh one rupee as a notional fees because that would be my contribution to the uh, uh whole whole episode you know but the taj group was uh, again very professional uh i was invited and explained that uh, you know we are getting insured so you please quote your fees and uh, at the end of the project if you uh, if you want to share your profit back with us uh, we have uh, they have uh, formed a trust to support the people or the victims of this uh, this is so this you can uh, pay back the profits if you want at the end of the project so they were also professional so i did quote a rupee in writing uh, with this thought process that this is uh, my my uh, humble contribution in the fight that our country is uh, giving against terrorism that is really very impressive and very thoughtful of you sir thank you i would like to request dr prashant bhave sir the hod of civil and environmental engineering department at vjti to say a few words can i can i just say one more thing sure sir sure see when, when i said that every structure has a has a vastu even an rcc structure has a soul in it huh? not only heritage structures so you of you 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 as structural engineers you as civil engineers would be creating so many structures for the nation for the society so just understand always that when you give birth to a new child which is in the form of a structure whether it is 100 uh, feet tall or 200 feet wide you are giving birth to a big structure a big soul and the soul will bless you if you do your job properly and your career will be unstoppable so always try and get that blessing from the structure that you are creating or you are recreating conservation is recreation so it's up to you bhave sir sorry madhav zara bol do nahi 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 sir very much uh, i have heard you for all that 1 uh, hour 20 minutes and i would like to say something 3 4 minutes i'll take and i'll talk with my students and uh, uh, some of the i i, I think uh, 60 70 students are online and they are over there so there are two things one is uh, i am giving you a simile from the field of medicine cardiac surgery is supposed to be one of the complicated surgeries so all those who perform cardiac surgery they are a surgeon of repute unless you have an expertise you can do it but performing the surgery on a neonate neonate means one who has born or one the baby who is of 5 weeks 6 weeks or a aged who is 80 years old it's a challenge because you have to keep in mind all the parameters and there are multiple chances of failure so when chetan sir you work with such kind of structures no doubt we know each other very well for last 7 years and uh, i have heard of all these uh, things and seen uh, the station the csk station with you couple of times as a part of our uh, committee where we work together i would like to share my experience of indore rajwada i have seen the structure 44 years back when i was 15 years old and i have seen the structure as you have described it how it used to look like and uh, mind it during those days we used to go right up to the fifth or the sixth uh, storied window and from there we used to see the city of indore 
and after that i have seen that incidents not the incidents but when the fire broke it was gutted the whole of i mean uh, i think it is the south side or uh, the north side which was gutted completely and uh, the hall and the furniture whatever i mean the, the wooden structures all as you have shown uh, has gone totally and there were no drawings and nothing was available and then probably you could get the drawings and could do it now when i saw the pictures and recently when i visited i i saw that it has come to the same glory which i have seen it 45 years back 44 years back and i have seen it minded from inside also very well because during those days it was allowed uh, people used to go inside and see that ganesh hall darbar hall the temple which was inside ayyabais uh, all those uh, things which were there inside now when i go and see uh, the structure i have not visited from inside now i will definitely go and see it has come to the same uh, glory which as you described that there was one old gentleman and he said it that ye waisa hi dikhta hai jaisa pehle tha so i would like uh, my i would like to tell it to my students those who are there that visit to these structures as chetan sir said it that the structures they talk this this is really a very challenging a field and it's a super speciality this is the era of speciality we all work in the era of speciality nowadays but this is super speciality and i know chetan sir is very much occupied he said it that he never uh, whatever has happened two or three things today has rarely or it has not happened with him yes because we are the first to reach for the meetings always and mind it these meetings are not one or two i think we have shared 34 35 uh, meetings or more than that and we always reach there by 225 when the meeting is of 230 he is there coincidentally or fortunately i am also there so it has happened something which has happened which has never happened but there is one thing which i want to share i was trying mr chetan raiker to come and talk with the students for last 5 years 6 years i could not do that now towards the end of uh, my life with uh, vjti i could see chetan raiker sir come over here and talk with the students so one wish fulfilled sir so it was in my bucket list probably and it has come over there thank you very much sir from the depth of my heart i know your schedule and uh, your schedule and your calls everything thank you very much for from my department side my thank pleasure, you sir my thank pleasure you, sir. my thank pleasure you. absolutely my pleasure sir thank yes, you prasant sir yes. your words really inspired us and i assure you we all will surely visit these structures thank you so in an all this has been an amazing session we are simply elated you could join us today it's an honor to welcome you to our sesa family Also thank you to our wonderful audience for tuning in. We hope you all really enjoyed this session. I have a short announcement to make before we conclude this session. Sesa conducts Stapatya event series every year in which we arrange events like planet tendering, card wars, etc. Make sure you all take part to witness the fantastic combination of amusement and academics. So we will be having another guest lecture series. and make sure you attend that too do subscribe to our youtube channel and follow our instagram page for all the further updates i am samriti darak signing off until next time this is sesa vjti thank you thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank you very much everybody thank you sir thank you so much pleasure, sir. pleasure. bye 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 chetan sir i had a request uh, yes.